now at 11 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. It's back to school for triad students in a couple of weeks. Tips on how to keep your scholar out of the nurse's office. Dangerous signs surround a historic High Point church as crews are set to demolish it. I'm Time Warner Cable News reporter Tony Evans. And coming up, I'll show you how you can help preserve the church's history. And Topsail Beach leaders are trying to figure out what to do about beach erosion. Why they say the answer may be a tube. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. Those stories are coming right up. But first tonight, meteorologist Bob Child is here. The first check of your weather on the ones forecast. And Bob, we really had some great weather earlier this week. Felt a little bit warmer today. It got a little warmer today, but I've got to tell you, Sharon, the story tonight, of course, has been the rain. For a select few of you, we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the temperatures. We've got some low 70s and some upper 60s. It is 75 in Burlington right now. You will cool down when you get some of this. Which is about, that's all that's left. This was a tremendous amount of rain. I'm going to put this into motion. Pretty much running due east right now or for Scythe and Guilford County lines. Doppler estimates going in the category of a half to maybe one and a half inches of rain. We'll take a little bit more look at uh, wind those radar loops up a little bit. Uh, back. So the last of the showers will be done. We should bottom out near 63 with a high tomorrow around 88. And we'll talk about a pretty warm but nice weekend coming up. Sharon. All right. See you then. Thank you, Bob. A federal civil rights trial against Alamance County Sheriff Terry Johnson continued today with witnesses who worked for the sheriff. Lieutenant Wes Anderson said Sheriff Johnson disciplined him twice for off-color remarks he made, one verbal, another in email. Anderson said the sheriff made it clear his behavior cost him at least one promotion. State leaders are celebrating 20 years of North Carolina's participation in the Booze It and Lose It anti-drunk driving campaign. They say nearly one and a half million drunk driving arrests have been made since they started participating in this program in 1994. Leaders also say alcohol-related driving fatalities are decreasing. There's been uh, tens of thousands of arrests uh, from Booze It and Lose It uh, over that 20-year period. <laughs> At the same time, uh, our goal is to drive down those highway deaths. Uh, it was a fairly Officials also kicked off a Labor Day anti-drunk driving enforcement push between now and September 1st. You can expect to see more drunk driving checkpoints and patrols in all North Carolina counties. A global drone company thinks Winston-Salem could be the perfect location for its headquarters. Olaris Aircraft is used for safety and emergency response operations. City leaders think the new technology would be a good addition to the economy and culture. Well, certainly a company like this is cutting edge, and I think it fits very well within our whole mantra of a city of arts and innovation. Uh, this is certainly an innovative way of using drones in terms of law enforcement and public safety. Polaris executives are asking the State Department of Commerce for $6 million in incentives. They hope to have an agreement by the end of September. High Point will soon say goodbye to a century-old church. Structural problems have made it unsafe and it's slated for demolition. Tony Evans shows us how the congregation is working to avoid a total loss. For information on how to donate to help remove the stained glass windows, you can log on to our website, twcnews.com. Just do a search for First Baptist Church Cathedral. It's referred to informally among teachers and parents as the back-to-school plague when the classroom at the start of a new school year is a hot zone for germs. So what can parents, teachers, and kids do to keep the flu and other bugs at bay? The CDC says that on average, elementary school students get 8 to 12 colds or cases of the flu every year. So teach your kids healthy habits as they head back to school. First, know the hot zones. The germiest place at school actually is not the bathroom, it's the water fountain. Next, experts say antibacterial hand sanitizer is good, but hand washing is best. The rule of thumb, use hot water, soap, and wash long enough to sing happy birthday twice. After that, keep their immune system up to give them a fighting chance against these common illnesses by getting enough sleep. And finally, exercise at least 40 minutes a day and eat a healthy diet rich in vitamin C. And there's a wave of incoming freshmen taking over the triangle this weekend. It is move-in day for many. In Raleigh, the new NC State arrivals started settling into residence halls. 
Over at UNC Chapel Hill, the university says they had a record number of applicants. Students will continue the move-in process until Monday, and businesses on Franklin Street in Chapel Hill are preparing for a busy weekend. They're moving back in, and then, of course, football season right around the corner, 16 days from today, and they're very pumped up about that as well. Restaurant and store owners say this is one of their most profitable weekends as families help move their students into the dorms. And coming up next here at 11 o'clock. Well, once again, had a few showers pass through mostly the northern triad early. We got some fog forming out there by daybreak, but a weekend forecast that uh, cross your fingers and hold your tongue right, you might like. Got all those details coming right up. Five. North Topsail beach leaders are struggling to find a solution to severe erosion affecting 1,500 feet of shoreline. Well, today, town leaders met to talk about their options after two offshore hurricanes, and last week's supermoon left the northernmost end with hardly any sand. Amanda Wilcox shows us why they think their answer may come in the form of a tube. Cable News. Last year, the town renourished about a mile and a half of shoreline using more than 500,000 cubic yards of sand. They say it's holding up well, except for that 1,500 foot section. All right, let's go to Bob Child now with a full look at your weather on the ones forecast. What's going on, Bob? Well, we've had some of the seven day out. I think we'll have a fine day on Sunday for the final round of the Wyndham, and then we'll just take it back to summertime all next week. And your sports is up next tonight. The Grasshoppers took on Kannapolis tonight in the Gate City. Mike has those highlights plus a wrap from Wyndham. And this weekend, thousands will take to the streets of Uptown Charlotte. Hear why in our Carolina Minute. Finally night, Tar Heel basketball playing exhibition hoops in the Bahamas. Nice place to go, I guess, if you've got nothing to do, want to play some hoops. And they drop an 84-83 decision to the Providence Bahamas Storm. The Storm went on a 14-5 run to cap the game. Thanks to a three-pointer from Ernest Saunders. He'll get 11 from Isaiah Hicks, 10 from Justin Jackson, Kennedy Meeks. Carolina will play the Bahamas All-Stars Saturday at 5 o'clock in their second and final game of the Summer of Thunder Tournament. And then they might head to the beach or perhaps the pool. We need to cover them next year. I, I lobbied. Trust me, I lobbied. That's all we can do. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> More news after this break here on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45 and Live Lotto is next. Here's tonight's Carolina Minute. A Cumberland County family is pleading for answers about who hit and killed their loved one while he was walking earlier this week. Authorities say whoever struck and killed 31-year-old Ronald Reed Jr. never stopped to help, but did stop to take a look at the damage to their dark-colored Ford Explorer. Reed's wife tells us she forgives whoever did this. She just wants some closure. A disagreement between Republicans on a controversial sales tax bill held up debate today in what was supposed to be the last day of session in the legislature. Now the session will spill into next week. Lawmakers will take a final vote on the tax bill, but will wait to take up the coal ash cleanup plan and Medicaid reform next year. This weekend, thousands of people are expected to take part in a pride festival and parade in our state. The 14th annual festival in the Queen City will be followed by Sunday afternoon's pride parade. More than 100 vendors will showcase their pride for the LGBT community. A North Carolina ministry and a popular restaurant are teaming up to help a child in need. All Things Possible Ministry partnered with Toast Cafe to raise money for a toddler with a rare bone disease. Elise Roberts has more on the effort to make life a little easier for Connor Goldhammer. And organizers met their goal well before their deadline. They've already put in the order for Connor's new chair. Well, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge continues to gain momentum in the state. Okay, guys, let's do it. You have 24 hours. Today's Senate President Pro Tem Phil Berger was doused in ice water and challenged Governor Pat McCrory to do the same. Well, McCrory responded shortly after that, posting that video of the challenge on Facebook. He made a donation in honor of Joe Martin, former North Carolina Governor Jim Martin's brother. He then challenged Senator Richard Burr. Attorney General Roy Cooper also took part in the challenge to raise money for the disease in downtown Raleigh this afternoon. Cooper then challenged UNC basketball coach Roy Williams to take the ice bath. Before you head to bed, let's get a last check of the forecast now with Bob Child. Well, some of you are taking a bath, Sharon. There's the rain, what rain we had out there is... 
Thank you, Bob, and thank you for joining us. Jimmy Kimmel Live is up next, and Time Warner Cable News is available around the clock and on your schedule. Have a great weekend.